everybody and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Cat Spit Productions. Thanks for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. If you like what you see, make sure to rate thumbs up. You like the tips, you like the information, all the good stuff that I give you and maybe even some of the humor, then make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now because it does make kittens happy. All right, so listen. I just wanted to give you my opinion about stretching your own screens when you're first starting out in screen printing. A lot of people ask me, you know, should I stretch my own screens or they'll call me and say, I'm going to stretch my own screens. And you know, they're asking me technical questions about the printing actually, and not so much about screen stretching. And they think that, you know, I guess that maybe screen stretching is pretty easy, but it, it may or may not be, depending on the individual. So let's talk about it really quick. Okay, so here's the deal. A lot of people will want to or attempt to stretch screens on wood frames. Okay, so that is possible and you know, you can do that at home, of course you can. But I think the technical issue there would be making the wood frame and having the correct carpentry skills to use in order to you know interlock the corners with the uh, I, I don't know what it's called the jointing and stuff like that I'm not a carpenter uh, you know so that the screen is very stable and um, not wobbly at the corners and that's really critical the other thing to consider is that the wood that you want to use needs to be lightweight but very strong and it also really should be um, hardened or treated with a uh, lacquer or some kind of enamel covering or whatever you would call it, a wood finish that's going to prevent the wood from absorbing water because as you know, these screens are going to get wet. They're going to get soaked and when wood gets wet, it tends to warp and swell and do all kinds of things. Okay, so um, the other thing with wood frames is that you have to attach the screen to the frame with uh, either staples. There's you know, there are different ways to do it. There's um, a, um, a it's kind of like a nylon uh, piece of fabric that comes in rolls that you can put over and then staple into so it doesn't tear the mesh. And the thing is, is that the mesh tension that you're going to be able to achieve is probably going to be much lower than where you want it to be, okay? And the deal is with when you print with low mesh or uh, low tension mesh in the screen, uh, you're gonna end up having less resolution in your print and you're also going to use more ink than you need to. A nice tight mesh screen will use less ink and print a better print. And it will also, you know, yeah, better print, you know, crisp, clear, nice, good print surface and all that stuff. Okay, so the wood frames are, in my opinion, inferior because over time they usually start to wiggle and wobble and they, you know, they just don't hold the same mesh tension as an aluminum frame, all right? So aluminum frames, on the other hand, are not easy to stretch because you need a stretching device, something like this. All right, so check it out. This is a really, really vintage manual screen stretching device. Actually, this was something um, that my father had when he used to work. Um, at this company called Majest Tech, which is now part of Saudi. Okay, and so this device really is, it's too small for a 20 by 24 screen. As you can see, it's too small. So you would have to, you know, because the screen fits inside here. You place the screen right in here, and then the mesh is put over top, and it's, it's put in these, it has these little things that slide out. So the mesh is pulled over this part and then these pieces are slid in here to lock the mesh in place. And it's not a very easy thing to do. You have to do this all by hand and you have to try to get the mesh all straight, flattened out, and also you want to try to align the grid of the mesh to be parallel with each side of the screen. Not a lot of people know that, but when you stretch screens, you don't want the grid of the, of the mesh to be curved or distorted, okay? So it can be difficult to work with. And then it's actually, right now, I actually have it pulled out all the way, but the way it works, this one's broken. <laughs> 
I have to get this nut welded back on over here. But uh, basically, it's good because I can show you how it works is, is you crank it and the thing will move back like that. Okay, so they go in and out by cranking a little threaded screw. So it's based on screw, a screw, and that is what is going to apply the tension to the mesh. Once the tension to the mesh is, is complete or satisfactory, then we would spread the base of the glue around the frame through the mesh, because the mesh is on top of the frame. I'm sorry I don't have a frame that fits in here. It's very small, actually. Um, but the glue is spread around on top of the mesh, making contact with the frame edge, and then the aerosol or spray bottle of activator is sprayed, and the, the uh, cyanacrylate glue will instantly harden, and you'll be able to take this out of the unit immediately. Okay, so that's usually how we do aluminum screens. Of course, with a pneumatic stretcher, not necessarily a manual stretcher like this. So this one could be used for small wood screens, and it would be quite handy for, for stretching small wood screens because, you know, it gives you that ability to crank the mesh out on each side, pulling the mesh to tension, and then you can either staple or glue because some wood frames are actually glued at just like an aluminum frame, okay? So I do sell a manual screen stretching device, if that's a tongue twister, screen stretching device, uh, from Rhino Tech, you can check it out on my e-commerce site if you're interested in that. It's, it's, not, it's not too costly, but it's not cheap either. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, these are, these are some of the reasons why I recommend aluminum frames, because it's just going to eliminate that whole problem of learning how to stretch screens and the variables that are involved in doing so. And of course, please don't forget, if you need screen printing equipment or supplies, to check out catsbitscreenprintsupply.com where you'll find such things as pre-stretched screens, like we're talking about today. 20 by 24 and 23 by 31 aluminum pre-stretched screens available at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. And, you know, again, gluing the screen to the metal, because it's glued, takes a very stinky, odorous two-part glue, a cyanacrylate, I think that's how you pronounce it. But this is, you know, there's a glue base that you kind of spread down on the frame, and then there's a, a spray activator, which either could be just a spray bottle or an aerosol can. And the thing about it is, is that the, the glue smells really, really, really bad. Okay, so, you know, it's not impossible to get mesh. Okay, I do sell loose mesh in the storefront. I have some rolls, you know, different mesh counts. Okay, so I do have this in the storefront, and I sell this to to people who want to make screens here locally. I just don't get into selling a lot of fabric online, although I can. If you want fabric, if you need fabric, you can contact me. I sell Saudi mesh, okay? So why, you know, ultimately my recommendation is to buy aluminum pre-made screens because your return on investment is going to be huge. A 110 mesh aluminum frame on my website, for instance, costs $21 plus a little shipping. So that $21, you're going to earn back on your first print job. And, you know, this screen can last for years and print thousands of shirts. So the money you invest in this screen is just negligible in the long run, as long as you take care of your screens. Well, this screen here has a little tear in it. And I'm going to try to demonstrate the cyanacrylate glue and make a little quick hodgepodge repair there and see if we could save the screen and use it a little bit maybe for students. Okay, so that's, you know, that's my whole opinion on the thing. Um, while it is possible to stretch wood frames, you know, such as this one. Okay, so check it out. Here is a wood screen that I bought, or I didn't buy it. I think somebody sent it to me or something. And you can see, you know, it has the very cool jointed dove dovetail or whatever i forget what you call this stuff i'm not a carpenter but it's got the good joints and everything and it's even covered in lacquer or something right and it might have got wet once and it's already warped okay this is my exposure unit with the glass so basically this this frame edge is up okay so that's what i'm saying this thing got wet once and it's already warping and ultimately, over time, these little things will break 
or possibly break depending on how rough your people handle your screens and stuff in shop you know what I'm saying I'm not saying that you can't get a good print with a wood frame and I'm not saying that they're not you know any good I'm just saying that a pre-stretched aluminum screen is way better it blows this thing away it'll have much higher mesh tension and it will last for many 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 moons many years without losing much more tension than when it was originally stretched so it should stay at about 18 to 20 newtons an aluminum screen whereas this one here um, you know wood can bow it can swell the joints can break and it can warp very very easily so that's what I'm saying I'm recommending and suggesting aluminum screens in order to help you eliminate variables that would be a problem for you when you're first starting out it's not that I'm saying that wood screens suck even though that's what I think <laughs> in other words I don't like wood screens I would never print with a wood screen ever again because aluminum frames are just much better it may not be the greatest idea especially if you're starting out because the pre-stretched aluminum screen is going to be so much easier to work with and I'm not trying to sell here it's not that I'm trying to sell I honestly don't make a whole lot on screens to tell you the truth so it's not something you know I'd have to sell thousands and thousands and thousands you know to make any kind of significant money on screens and uh, so it's not about selling I'm just trying to help you do it and when you have to worry about the print job and all the things about emulsion and coating and mesh prep and uh, you know spray tack and all these things haze remover exposure times and all these things that you have to deal with you really don't need to get convoluted in trying to learn how to stretch a screen that is ultimately most likely going to be a problem for you or at the very least like I said give you poor resolution and use more ink than you need to so my recommendation is just buy a pre-made aluminum screen with the mesh tension which will be at about 18 to 20 newtons which is fine for printing t-shirts you really don't need more tension than that for printing t-shirts okay higher mesh tension is usually associated with graphic industrial printing where they will use roller frames which I'm sure you heard of okay so but for t-shirts we really don't need to have 35 or 40 newtons it's just not necessary okay so recommendation is buy pre-made aluminum screens eliminate that whole process of making them and uh, you know any kind of problems with them all right so I'm not even sure hopefully I, there's a little tear over here and it's so close to the frame edge that I may be able to put some of this glue in here and activate it and fix it okay so that's what I'm gonna try to do to see if I could use this for a student but this is this is the glue this is one I'm testing that's why it's covered don't ask me yet <laughs> I'm just testing it okay and let's see if any oh hold on a second okay so what would what happen is we spread the glue around the frame edge and then the activator is sprayed on so we're gonna try to do that here really quick and see if we can fix this with a little bit of this glue and actually um, <laughs> the uh, bottle needs to be opened up a little bit more okay So I get a little bit of this, the, this base or whatever. I don't know what you would really call it. Okay. And we got it in there. Oh, it's burning my eyes already. It stinks. Okay. And then this is the little activator. And that's basically it. <laughs> you should be able to, you know, just spray a bit on there. Okay, try to make sure that side is cured and uh, I dribbled a little over there but as long as I don't put any activator on it I should be able to rinse that out in the washout booth okay so that's that's kind of how the stuff works it would be spread around the frame edge the base of the glue this clear gooey stuff gets spread all the way around the frame edge and then the activator is sprayed on just like I did there and it is already completely dry okay so that worked pretty good 
We'll see how it holds the tear. I'll probably put a piece of uh, duct tape over there like I do. You see me do that in some of my other videos. And I'll probably be able to use this screen for students and stuff. So it's, it's still usable. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your time and attention again, of course. And uh, if you did like the video, make sure to subscribe. And if you need screen printing equipment or supplies, check out Catspit ScreenPrintSupply.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.